hour, sponsored by the makers of Ipsy Whipsy, the washcloth of dreams. We bring to you each evening at this time the delightful songs of Gloria Eden, the Purity Girl. To you in the mountains, by the oceanside, on the desert, in Manhattan's penthouse, or little nest on Main Street, wherever you are, if there's a dream in your heart, listen, for we bring to you the sweetheart every man remembers, the hope of every boy, the girl every woman thinks she was and every maiden wants to be, America's purity girl, Glory Eden. Are you ready, Glory? Yes, Ed, I'm ready. And to whom do you dedicate this song, Glory? To the dear little kitties in the orphan's home in Minishawaka, North Dakota. That's fine, Glory, and I'll bet they'll enjoy it, too. I hope so, Ed. Listen, those things aren't here. By the time I finish, I'll sign off with something stronger than I love you. Youth has looked for lovers here. Time began to fly. Cinderella found a thrill. Tell me. Gloria, you'd better get back here. If she says if those doodads are not here... They she... will be. He's banged them now. She says if they're not, tonight she signs off not with I love you, but... Uh, of course we can cut her off the air, but how will it look, Mr. Ripswitch? I'm responsible here. What'll the company think? He'll be here any minute and with them. All right, you're the sponsor. It's your company she advertises, not me. Yet I'm having the goose quivers. Get those doodads. We will. Three months ago, just a kid in an orphan asylum. And now, the biggest draw in the entire system. Oh, isn't it wonderful? And do you know she's polling more votes in our Midwest contest than anybody? It takes me three months to teach her how important she is to Ipsy Wipsy. That she mustn't do this because it will spoil the business. She mustn't do that because it will reflect upon the product. And now that she is wise, she is making me pay through the nose every hour. Oh, this is awful. Sure it's awful. But they will cut her off the air. The public won't hear her swear. But we must be careful, Mr. Ripswitch. There's a reporter here. A sob sister Speed got for an interview. But is she really? Oh, well, Marada. Look for yourself. Come on. Oh, Mr. Ripswitch. This is Mr. Ipswich, head of Ipsy Whipsy, Miss Eldorada de Leon of the Independent News Syndicate. Very pleased to meet you. How do you do? We were in school together in dear old Wichita. Yes. Oh, you were her teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Ripswitch, he's always kidding that way. Oh. Ain't it wonderful? I'm here to interview Glory for a Sunday feature. It would help me so much if I could get your viewpoint. How does it feel to have discovered a new radio sensation? Well, you know... Aren't uh, you proud? Yes. Has it helped your business, Mr. Ipswich? I would say... Uh, can uh, you show me the figures? Has it doubled or tripled? It, uh... Oh, can you feel the pull? Well, I... To uh, what do you attribute her great popularity? Why, I think... Now, uh, my theory is that she represents the girlhood of the world, the lost innocence that went out with the war. She doesn't drink or smoke, no jazz, just an old-fashioned girl. Am I right, Mr. Ipstitch? Huh? What do you think? Well, I... Uh... Oh, why, she's just a child. And what a profile. Why, it's an angel's profile. No wonder they call her the purity girl. I dedicate my next song to all the Glory Eden clubs who are... Why, she looks like a movie star. And this little song was written especially for me. I hope you like it. You know, I know all the movie speed. Why, Eden, and I... Oh, what a sweet dress. It looks just like her. Meet the man who designed it. Herbert, Herbert. Yeah, yes, please. 
Mr. Herbert Childress, dressmaker deluxe. Really? <laughs> well. Oh. He creates all Glory's garments. Oh. This is a great pleasure, Mr. And Mr. her penthouse, too. You should see her penthouse on the top of Hotel Royale. Oh. He created it specially to catch her radiant personality. Eh, yeah, Herbert? Oh, Mr. Lip Switch. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Emerald. El Morada. Rada, Rada. Uh, I got an idea. Supposing you will go out there to interview Glory. You see, out here, you can catch nothing of her radiant personality. But out there, Herbert, yes. you, you take the lady for a little bite, please, please. Oh, and we'll what? join you later. Yes. Oh, wonderful, a marvelous, and right in her own setting. Yes, you oh. take the lady out, yes. and, and order for the lady anything she wants. Anything. What's the matter now? Won't Gloria sign the contract? Oh, I don't know yet. I didn't even ask her. Appleby's got it with him. If she doesn't sign this contract, I am ruined. Kelsey Dishrag wants her. And I heard they are branching out with washcloths, too. But if she does sign, I'm still ruined. Such notions she's got. What do you think she pulled on me tonight? What? We were walking down the Broadway. So we are passing by the window. And she sees in the window one of them do they. And what do you think she says? What does she say? She says that if I don't get for her, one of them do that trap. You got it. It's against my legal advice, Miss Ipswich. It's blackmail. And if you let her start that... You let her start, I can't stop her. And so, dear friends, until tomorrow... Good night, everybody. I love you all. Good night, Glory, and sweet dreams. Good night. Remember Glory, the purity girl, and remember Ipsy Wipsy, the washcloth of dreams, as soft as the down of a swan, as fragrant as a budding rose, as pure as the purity girl. Good night, Johnny. People are in nightclubs and speakeasies in Harlem, but here we are. <coughs> you better hurry, dear, and change. Change? Your gown. What's the matter with it? El Morado will expect to see you in negligee, resting after your... Uh... Oh, all right. Hurry, hurry. She's not coming up too soon. No, no, no. I left it right in the middle of a lobster. Fine. What about a little bite for us? Room service. Uh, what would you relish, darling? Caviar, lobster and wine. Send the waiter to Miss Eden's penthouse. Avocado salad, champagne. Please, my dear, it makes me ill. It really does. Fruit salad with whipped cream and nuts and marchina cherries. Please, my darling, I shall scream. <laughs> Don't you see that it doesn't suit your personality? Well, it suits my stomach. But, my dear, you're not a vamp. You're not a siren. And I'm no big devil either. After all, Gloria, you know waiters talk. And sell their stories to the papers. And the world will come to an end if I don't go to bed on mush and milk. When I've taken such pains. Well, you've certainly given plenty. Oh. This. My don't make her angry. She didn't sign that contract yet. Not yet. Not yet. No makeup, no perfume, no jewelry. Oh, and I just got you some of the grandest. Oh, look at these pajamas I bought you today, honey. Oh, if I don't get to wear them soon, I'll bust. New York ain't at all like I thought it was going to be when I was in the home. I can't dress like I want to. I can't even eat like I want to. No makeup, no jewelry, nothing. It's awful. I was just telling my boyfriend last night. Where'd you go? Harlem? Where? What'd you do? Did we? Mmm. -hmm. And I learned a new step. Oh, show me. Oh, let me try. 
And uh, for Miss uh, Glory, uh, breast of young chicken on uh, whole wheat toast. Yes, sir. Um, uh, no uh, mayonnaise. No. Unsalted uh, butter, a baked apple with cream, uh, certified, not uh, pasteurized. Yes, sir, of course. Uh, babies, babies' milk. We we'll always give to Miss Glory. <clears throat> and uh, cocoa, yes. not chocolate. Cocoa. Oh, yes, sir. That's what we we'll always give to Miss Glory. All the waiters know that Miss Glory. What are you going to have this evening, Herbie? Some uh, fresh caviar, <clears throat> lobster thermidor, avocado salad, also fruit salad, with whipped cream, nuts, maraschino cherries, chocolate ice cream with hot fudge sauce and marshmallow cake. Ha, 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 ha. Hey, that newspaper dame. I don't want her busting in yet. Give me the dining room. Hello, Captain. You got a girl down there eating as though her little heart would break. Tell them to keep her. Tell them to hold her. Tell them to... Tell her that Mr. Ipswich is most anxious for her to try a special dish of his. Baked Alaska for dessert. Yeah. I know it's made order. Yeah. And I also know it takes 20 minutes. Thank you. Lovely. Lovely. All I need is a lily. Splendid. Splendid. And now that we are all so comfy, there is a bright, brand new contract all ready for our little darling to sign. <laughs> no, I won't sign it. But you get a present if you do, Gloria. A bonus, don't you see? A thousand dollars. I don't want a thousand dollars. I got a thousand dollars. I won't sign it. It's a beautiful contract. It's got everything. That's just the trouble with it. It's got too much. Look, she shall not smoke. It doesn't look good to the corn belt. But darling, it's not in character. It simply doesn't suit your personality. Nor swear, nor drink. It isn't me, Gloria, that objects. I am as wet as any... Glory, how would it look? Me playing you up as the purity girl and then have the newspapers find you in jail some morning all pie-eyed. I won't go to jail. I got a lawyer. Shall not attend nightclubs or other places of public entertainment, nor be seen at any time alone with any man I ask you. You know how it is. You know how they talk. If you even look at a man, Walter Winchell has you anticipating a blankety-blank event. We cannot take any chances. Think of the product. It's not for me that I'm begging you. It's for Ipsy Weepsy. No! I was better off in the orphan's home. It's the truth. I had much more fun in the orphan's home After than I've ever had. After all that I've done for you. As hard as I've worked. The way I put you over. What am I getting out of it? What have I got for fun? Piano! Oh! <laughs> Iridia! Oh! Books! 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 Glory! Glory! What are you doing? Oh. Glory! Glory! All right. Glory, 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 stop, stop. You'll wear yourself out. They can hear you. Think of the product. Glory. I've been in New York three whole months, and not once have I seen a man. Oh, no. I knew a girl once who came to New York, and she met men all the time. And, and she got a fur coat. In social glory, a fur coat tomorrow. A fur coat in May? Oh, it won't always be May. No, no. <laughs> and, and then she got in trouble. What? The girl, she got in trouble, you know. I know, I know, I know. Well, I'm not. And you are complaining? <laughs> well, at least she got in trouble, and I'm not even getting there. <laughs> I want to sin and suffer. <laughs> now I'm only suffering. I thought I'd drink champagne and lobster and wear a black velvet dress without any back and long earrings and go to the devil. <laughs> and you won't even take me to Harlem. <laughs> Baby, baby. Oh, darling, remember, you're the purity girl. And me, 
national institution. Oh, I don't want to be a national institution. I don't want to be a purity girl. I want to be like other girls. I want, I want a sweetheart. Darned if she isn't right. And why not? She is Miss Every Girl, and it's spring. Blossom, bird, music. She sings to her imaginary sweetheart, and the dream comes true. The public will love it. So will I. Go fix your face. You're a sight. Oh. Remember, no makeup, no perfume, no jewelry. Do you want to help me? She's on top of the world right now. Everybody's angel. But it won't last. They'll give her a swift kick in the pants. I can feel it. It's a sixth sense with we newspaper boys. Hey. I'm afraid to leave her alone with the bellboy for fear she'll start talking the facts of life. But I don't see how it A is. romance would be a parachute so she can glide down easily, start him up another alley. Young love, see? Lots of nice pictures of her and the man. Good stories that all her songs are to him. You know, like Morton Downey to his wife. Yeah, yeah. Glory's got to have a sweetheart. He's right. He's right. Of course, it wouldn't go big with my wife, but uh, why not? Well, you know, woman, but as long as it is for the product, I'll do it. You'll do it. Don't be a fool, Samuel. You'll get sued yet making such statements. You're a married man, head of a family. Now, I am a bachelor. Hey, wait a minute. This is just a stunt. You two are prominent businessmen. He is right. It ain't my style. You don't think I should, um... um... No. None of us should be called upon to make the supreme sacrifice. It should be someone who, uh, you know, like, uh, isn't it too bad that Lindy's married? Ah, uh, he would have been great. But how about a crooner? A crooner? No, they're all married. Seems like marriage kind of runs in crooners. We are getting him for you, Glory. I don't want a crooner. I want a playboy. A what? An international playboy. All the girls got him. I think they're cute. No, no, you're spoiling everything. Here we make her the purity girl, the symbol of youth and purity, and you give her second-hand men. It won't do. You're right. He is right, Speed. He's got to be brand new. Yes. Uh, what mm. you call it? Uh, uh, a virgin. Speed will get him for you. A brand new virgin. And just where am I going to find him? Well, uh, <gasps> my wife's got a cousin. Twice removed. Uh, no. no. All right. He should be Anglo-Saxon, you know, to the Corn Belt. And where do they leave those Anglo-Saxons? Hey, get me my secretary on the phone. Tell her to find where do they live and where they are the purest. <clears throat> Circle, 73513. Yes? Oh, yes. The purest Anglo-Saxons are found in the Kentucky mountains. The fan mail? What sex? What age? She wants to know what sex, what age. What age, darling? Not over 25. I will not have anyone over 25. Male, not over 25. Right away. Somebody draw one. I'll draw. Say, whose love is this? Glory finds her dream man. Fate. Guides her hand. Mmm, I like these Anglo-Saxons. Say, they are white, aren't they? Let me see, I'll dress him in blue. Oh, a little touch of gray, perhaps. Let's see what uh, he has to yes. say. I, I'm yes. an expert mm. graphologist. Mm. I can tell all about him by his handwriting. Dear dream girl, here I sit in my little cabin, seven miles by horse from the nearest town, looking at your picture. And I'm sending you one of mine in case you ever think of me. Hey, how's that for a song? In case you ever think of me. Terrible. I'm 23 years old. Too young. Have blue eyes and brown hair. Oh, dear, I didn't want a brunette. Oh, I don't care what color he is, as long as he takes me to Harlem. Six feet even in my stocking feet and weigh 168 pound strip. I don't like no, him. No. Well, I do. And after all, he's my dream man, not yours. And I'm going to have him. No, no, Glory. We better draw again. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Someone at the door. Yeah. Oh. 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 
Here, Miss Elma. Hello, Miss Elma. Oh, Mr. Ipswich. <laughs> Mr. Leon, you haven't met our Mr. Appleby. Uh, pleased to meet you. Delighted. And this is Glory. Oh, isn't it wonderful? Why, you're such a child. Why, she's only a baby, Mr. Ipswich. Oh, I can hardly realize. How must it feel to know that this dwight, dwight, big world is waiting to hear itty bitty girl sing? Oh. Madame, Madame? Oh. Oh, I can watch you eat. <laughs> A baked apple and milk. A certified milk. Yes. Every evening. <gasps> Isn't it wonderful? Wouldn't you just know? <laughs> Oh, Mr. Herbert, it's all so delicate. Oh, huh? Miss Elmerada. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. To my dream girl, to my, oh. Yes, Elmerada, that's why we asked you up. I knew we could trust you. <laughs> Romance, young love in the spring. You know how those things are. Oh, yes, yes, indeed, I know. I'm so excited. Oh, he's so sweet. Why, he's a perfect lamb. Uh, tell me, uh, where did she meet him? When and... Uh, they've been corresponding secret-like for some time. Really? Yes. Oh, my darling. I'm so excited. I can hardly breathe. Oh, now, tell me everything. You can trust El Morada. All the movie stars all say, you can trust El Morada. I know them all. I eat with them. I sleep with them. You sleep with them? Why... But... Listen, kid. I'm trusting you not to crack a word. Hold a story like this? Anyhow, only till next week, till he gets in town. He's coming here to New York City. <gasps> lovely, lovely. Just for a little trip to see the town. You know, to see the town. Oh, and the town will get to see him, Glory's dream man. Oh. And he's <laughs> such a lovely boy, Miss Emerald. Elmerada. <laughs> Elmerada, yeah. You'll love him. Yeah, yeah, oh. the brunette. Uh, blue eyes, curly hair, dimples here oh, and I there. Love dimples. <laughs> Only 23, but six feet in his socks. Oh, I can just see him. And weighs 168 pounds streaked. Oh, I can hardly wait. <laughs> Me too. You get a chance to see the city of New York, an education in itself. Well, I sure would like to go and see the station where she sings from, how she does it and such, but I don't reckon I can make it. It won't cost you a nickel. You'll be the guest of Mr. Ipswich, the Ipsy Whipsy man. Yeah, but well, what's he wanting to be giving me a trip for? Your letter. Think, out of 48 states, Kentucky wins. And you, Jim Davy, were chosen as the representative from Kentucky. Like a, like an oratorical contest. Exactly. I won a medal reciting last year. A ten-day trip. We leave tonight. Fly back in an airplane. I got your clothes right there. Clothes? What you bringing me clothes for? I got clothes. Lucky. I won the medal reciting in this. Lovely. We'll take it along for Sunday, but for every day. Them? Oh, much obliged, but I reckon I'll wear my store clothes. I don't want to look like no hayseed. Oh, you don't understand, Mr. Davy. This is sort of um, uh, a uniform. A uniform? Yes, a mountain uniform. This is what they'd expect from a representative of the purest Anglo-Saxons in the world. You're proud of your blood, aren't you? Yes, sir. Proud of your state? Well, sure I am. Well, if you go to town in those store clothes, they'll never believe it. They'll think you're putting on airs, trying to act city-fied because you're ashamed of your mountain. And you're not, are you? Gosh, no. Then wear these to prove it. This what? Cook's tour business. We're no hummingbirds. Sure, but he wants to see the town. Yes, but him. We want to see him. When? The engagement. When can we announce? My boss wants to know also when. 
Now, don't you think you're a little hasty? Now, don't no, give us any no, of those. I'm... There's going to be a wedding if it's shotgun, and I pull the trigger myself. You're not giving us any runaround after all the free advertising we've tossed you. The boss says it's just a publicity gag. Yes. Well, you tell your boss... That it's on the level. Right. Why, you wouldn't dare pull a gag like that on the press. For if you did, there'd be no more space for Ipsy Whipsy. Oh, no, that's unjust. That's unjust. Have I ever double-crossed you people? Well, well I... then... Gentlemen, it looks as though we've got to marry them. It's a great idea. I love weddings. I'll dress her in white. But, of course, uh, the honeymoon clothes must be in pastel shades. I'll have the loveliest trousseau in all New York. But before the wedding, an announcement party to meet the press. I'll be the best man. Or give her away, which? Ring bearer, if you like. But, Glory... When do I go to Harlem? Parks, churches, tombs. What do I care where Washington slept? Me, that's what I'm thinking of, me. Dens of iniquity, gambling, dying. That's what I want, when? When you are married. When you are married, you can go to... To the devil, I hope. Try to get him in my office. I'll get him, Sam. I'll get him. Say, what's the matter with that kid? We are trying to get him in his room for half an hour. He's at the broadcasting station in front of a mic. He wanted to recite to the folks back home, so I parked him there for an hour while the press lap up their liquor. On the air. Him on the air. I am ruined. <laughs> the kid's not wise to it, but the mic's dead. <laughs> and, and I'm dedicating this final number to the folks back home. And uh, to Miss Glory Eden, the purity girl, who, if it wasn't for the kindness of, I, I wouldn't get to be here. <clears throat> there are pictures painted on memory's walls a man can ne'er forget. Stand and gaze back. Hello, Connor. Looking for someone? No, just dropped in. Seeing the sights. What's that? That? That's Glory Eden's boyfriend. Isn't he having fun, though, talking to himself? What's the idea? Oh, I don't know. Speed Dennis said to give him a dead mic for an hour. They'd do anything to get us signed up. They're even going to give him a party tonight. Down life's long path, I sit and pour. Upon the span of years, the bugle calls, then came the war, and with it, mother's tears. The drums rolled out. We marched away. Chelsea Dishrag, the boss. All right, Mr. O'Connor. Hello? Oh, Connor, well, well. Did you get her? Well, why not? Oh, Sam Ipswich ain't signed her yet, huh? And he's throwing a big party for them. Well, you listen to me. You get yourself invited to that party. And stay sober and do your stuff. But let me tell you that if you don't get that girl away from Ipsy Whipsy and make her the Kelsey Dishrag girl, you're fired! I don't believe I know you, or do I? No, I'm new here. Oh, uh, where from? Missouri. Oh, aren't we all? <laughs> well, as I always say, live and learn and learn and love <laughs> love. Only 15 minutes more to cousin your booze, and then we see the lovebirds. Hooray! Oh, boy, let's have another slug <laughs> Oh, that's fine, that's fine. I'll be up any minute now. Glory. They'll ask you about your ideal man. You know the answer to that one. Now, remember, the dream of your life has come true. You have found your ideal, one of God's noblemen, and your ambition is to make him happy, to live the simple life with a few friends, flowers, the simple flowers, books. Have I got to say books? You've got to say books, flowers, 
A cat. In a little cottage in the hills. Cabin. Turn, darling. Hey, did you rehearse the fellow what to say to the newspaper boys? Oh, he's a natural. He'll do it better alone. Besides, I'm not so sure the kid would play ball if he knew. Glory, they'll ask you when he proposed, where, and how. But he hasn't. Hasn't what? Hasn't anything. He hasn't even proposed to me. Didn't you tell him? You? You? Did anybody tell you? Mr. Appleby, get him, now. Do you mean to say he hasn't asked you to marry him? No. He hasn't had a chance. How could he? We haven't had one moment alone together. When did you think he'd do it? Flowers are ordered. Preacher is ordered. Everything is ordered. Except the bridegroom. Hey, thank you. It's all right. He's on his way up. It's good. Come on, clear out, fellas. I'll take care of it. Listen. Tell him he's got to do it. Tell him, please, he's got to do it. Tell him not for her sake. Tell him not for my sake, but for the product, for Ripsy Whipsy. Don't worry, Speedy Weedy will take care of it. A Davy from Kentucky. Come in, Jim, come in. Sit down, boy, sit down. I want to have a talk with you. Jim, I don't quite know how to approach this subject. It's so delicate. And still, it's my duty. You must try to understand that boy. You must realize my position. You, uh, you've been seeing a lot of glory. You corresponded with her. In fact, you've led her to believe... Oh, Jim, she's such a child. So pure, so innocent. Jim Davy. Have you been trifling with our little girl's affections? No, sir, Mr. Dennis. No, sir. Why, you, you know how I feel about Miss Glory. Have you told her? Oh, no, I, I wouldn't dare. Man to man, sir. I stand like a brother to that little gal. Man to man, sir. What are your intentions? You, you mean... You, you mean... I mean business, Davy. I stand prepared as the nearest male to defend... Gee, I... Gee! <laughs> Put her there. I knew you could be depended upon to do the right thing, the decent thing. I knew that to a Davy of Kentucky, honor was not a lost word. Shake. I'll go and tell her. Well, wait, wait a minute. I heard tell once of a fella that let somebody else do his asking and he lost the gal. Maybe you better send her out to me, I... I reckon I can do my own courting. <laughs> Good luck, Jim. You want me? Yeah, I, uh, I... Yeah, yeah, that's it. I, I got something to ask you, Miss Glory. Yes? I... Won't you set? I reckon you noticed that I come up here to see you, from from Kentucky, I mean. Well, that's a, that's a mighty long ways to come. Well, I wouldn't I wouldn't have made such a long trip if, if I hadn't intended to. And let's go outside. Miss Glory, are you happy here? No. I hate it. Well, could you be happy with me? Well, I know you don't love me. You couldn't. You don't know me yet. But, well, there must have been something to make you remember my letter from all the hundreds that wrote you, or my picture. Or oh, give me a chance. That's all. I do like you a lot. Well, that's enough to start on. I, I couldn't expect more to start on. I reckon you know how I feel about you, Miss Glory.
tell me. You don't kiss like you look. Give us the lowdown, Speed. Of course we can't print it, but... Uh, what's the marriage all about? What's it to cover up? You suspicious, foul-mouthed vermin. You've lived in the slime so long... That you can't act like gentlemen in decent company. Listen, you cynics. It's love. Two hearts that beat as one in May. Something you've never known or never will know, but that's what it is. Young love, the real thing. <laughs> I do love you. Come, children. I As I was saying, an interview helps so. You sort of get acquainted with one another. Uh, tell me, Jim. Oh, may I call you Jim? Uh, what do you think of women? I'm here to get a story on your opinion of women. Well, sir, the worst woman in the world's better than the best man. And there ain't one of us living that's fit to tie the shoelace of any woman. Oh, lovely, lovely. Oh. My, my mother was a woman. Oh, sweet, sweet. I'll use that in my story. Well, well, so that's the situation. She hasn't signed yet, but she's going to. What's your ambition in life, Miss Eden? My dream come true. To marry some fine, strong man and live far, far away. In a little cottage, I mean a cabin, with hollyhocks and morning glories and buttercups and daisies and a little garden. A cow, maybe. I got a cow. And some dear little baby chickies. <clears throat> oh, can you cook, Miss Eden? Can I cook, say? Oh, just the simple things. But I like the simple things. Oh, gee, I love the simple things. A little kitchen with shining pots and pans and gingerbread in the oven. That's the life I want. Lovely. <laughs> How adorable. Cute. <laughs> uh, when is the wedding? Oh, I've got a little surprise for you. <laughs> Miss Emerald. Elmerada. Elmerada, how would you like to have it? <laughs> You'll enjoy oh, it, lady. Thank you. You'll enjoy it. Sweet. You'll enjoy it. <laughs> As a memory of my brother. <laughs> oh. Well, look, it's only a washcloth. Why? <laughs> Mr. Ipswich, it's so original. Well, it's something that you can use. <laughs> oh, girl, isn't that cute? You'll enjoy it. <laughs> and your gift to the bride. A new contract, I take it. Signed as she leaves on a honeymoon with photographers all around? All right. You may tell it to your readers. Say, where are you from? Missouri. Do you know the Ipsy Wipsy wash clothes there? They're on every tongue. <laughs> Where's my Ipsy Wipsy? Ipsy Wipsy? Oh. Help yourself. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, three, too many. Kind of tough, isn't it? But you'll have them with you all the time. The old man, the young man, and the other one. How many times have you seen her alone? Once. There you are, and you'll always have them. No, I won't. Not when I'm married, I won't. Every minute. Telling you what to do, where to go, what to say, what to wear. If she signs a contract. She won't. She hates it. Did she tell you that? Yeah, and I'm going to take her away. Jim, I'm with you. It's our duty to get her out of this. Did you know about that? Well, no. Yeah, yeah, sure. Well, 
Dr. Winter. How do you do? Good evening, Dr. Winters, and welcome. How do you do, Dr. Winters? How do you do? Ladies and gentlemen, I want to call your attention to that little light. When it goes on, we'll be on the air. Now, I'd like to give you a few instructions. There are several spots in the program where I know you'll want to applaud. <laughs> but this must only come on a signal from me. When I raise the left hand, I want soft applause. When I raise the right hand, I want loud applause. When I raise both hands and bring them down slowly, I want the applause to gradually fade out. Now, let's try it. It was very good. Now watch the little light. Two seconds. Don't forget to give, boy. This is the Ipsy Wipsy Hour. Tonight we bring you the wedding of America's purity girl and her dream man. I wish we had television, folks, so you could see the many beautiful gifts. Persian rugs, delicate laces, silverware, Fragile vases, flowers, linens, beautiful household furnishings, and wearing apparel too numerous to mention. And this is important to you and to me, friends, a brand new contract, a gift from Mr. Samuel Ipswich, president of the Ipsy Wipsy Company, makers of Ipsy Wipsy, the washcloth of dreams. Give it to me. It was a great idea, all right, giving her this contract for a wedding present. And she'll sign it right after the ceremony. Have you got the photographers ready? All right. gathered here to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony. Do you, James, take this woman for your lawful wedded wife to have and to hold from this day forward for better or worse, for richer or poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and cherish all the days of your life? I do. I do. Do you, Glory, Take this man for your lawful wedded husband to have and to hold from this day forward for better or worse, for richer or poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and cherish all the days of your life. I do. I do. <sighs> By authority vested in me, by God and the state of New York, I pronounce you man and wife. Well, friends, they're married. You hear the rice and old shoes? <laughs> and now, don't you want to speak to the folks, Jim? I, I hope I can make her happy. And how about you, Glory? You have looked for lovers since time began to fly. Cinderella found a prince, and so have I. We will take a brief trip. We are not on the air Saturday evening. Return Monday in time to meet you again at this hour. And until that time, sweet dreams. It's in the bag. I've got the kid sewed up. And he wouldn't let her sign with those crooks for all that the... That ain't saying she'll sign with me. Suppose she is through with Ipsy Wipsy. Will she come to Kelsey Dishrag? Didn't I tell you how she felt for Atlantic City? 
And when she sees the suite I got for them, overlooking the whole boardwalk and the orchids waiting for her, listen, I know Dame's back. She's got to sign first. I ain't giving them no wedding trip to Atlantic City with orchids unless she's the dish rag girl. That would give Sam Itchwitz the laugh on me. Leave it to me. Oh, here we are. Now remember, the car's waiting down front. I'll keep the crowd there until you change. Leonardo, take these to the front entrance of the Ipswich's car. Well. I've never seen such a crowd of people. Did oh. you see those people oh, out in front yeah, of the hotel? Why, well, oh. I nearly died. I, look at my dress. Oh, oh isn't that awful? Like such... All right, now a nice smile, Mr. Ipswich. I'd say another big smile. Uh, They're out. You bring Vera down, and we'll all meet in Westchester. You understand? All right. Oh, here's the contract. She oh. forgot to sign that. Witness, will you, Herbie? All right, Speedy Weedy. Oh, Flory, uh, hurry in here, dear. You've got to sign this. <laughs> oh, Jim, get the uh, the ink, the ink, and the the pen, the pen. Hurry, will you? Uh, Did you want me? Yes, darling. I want you to sign this. <laughs> oh, dear! Now look what you've done. Now what will I do? I certainly can't go out like that. Oh, you great! I sure I am old. sorry, Mr. Child. Oh, Vera, Vera can fix them. Well, I hope so. Sure, I can uh, fix them. Come right this way, Mr. Herbert. Well, I certainly can't go out like this. <laughs> well, that takes care of him, all right. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Everything's greased. Isn't it exciting? Won't Pop Ip Switch and Speed be mad when they find we've gone to Atlantic City? Sure, they'll be mad, all right, but it's your own honeymoon. Get into your clothes, will you? Okay. There's just one thing more. The old man wants her to sign now. Sign? Sign what? Contract. To sing. She's going to sing for you. Sure, she's going to sing for you. First night she gets back, but don't take no writing. So what are you trying to do? You know she ain't going to sing five years. Well, she was going to sing one night, and thanks to you helping get her out. Well, that's what it's all for, to get her out of this. She hates it. Don't be a sap. This doubles her salary. It ain't that. Salary don't matter, but she, she hates all this. She wants a little cabin with, with chickens and a cow. Well, you heard of yourself, Mr. O'Connor. You mean that interview? That publicity stuff? Sure. Don't you know this is all a gag? What's a, what's a gag? All of it. Just a publicity gag, bringing you up here, dialing you up in those hick clothes, letting you broadcast over a dead mic. A dead... You mean I, I didn't really... The folks back in Bolivar Gap didn't... Sure, and a dirty trick it was too, but you can pay him back now, all right, and it's a swell break for her. Think of it. Now she gets to sing with the Kelsey dish rag. No, maybe they lied, but she didn't. She meant what she said. Don't make me laugh. She don't want a contract. Contract? Twice as good as the Ipswich contract. In fact, it's the kind of contract she wants. Gimme. Five years and double the salary. Forget about the salary. Can I smoke? Can I drink? What about morality? Absolutely no morality. Glory. Oh, all right, I'll hurry. Well, was I right? Yeah, you was right. I'm always right about women. I know Danes from top to bottom. Vera, glory. Dear, what a honeymoon. No, 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 don't take those. Uh, you take the other two. I'll take care of those. Walk down two flights, then take the service elevator. The boss is in the car. We'll meet you there. And don't forget this. Jim, Jim, I'm ready. No, we're supposed to go that way.
They're awful slow. They're awfully slow. I got everything greased. Depot. Huh? Pennsylvania Station. Yeah. I always did want to see Atlantic City. Vera? Glory! Jim, where, where are my trousers? I want my pants. At first, I thought you were someone else. Well... So this is the risk. You wanted the simple things of life. Well, now you got them. Come here. Wait till Pop Ipswich finds out what you've done. Kidnapping me like this. It ain't kidnapping. You're my wife. Well, here's your dear little kitchen. Now, if you want something to eat, you can cook it yourself. And then here's a bedroom. the bed. Sure bed. I'll sleep out on a cot in the other room. Now we'll see how you like it. I mean this, this simple life stuff. Of course, I know now it was all a lie. Everything you said, just a lie. All of it. Well, if you think I'm so bad, then why do you want to stay married to me? I ain't sure that I do. Oh. But I'm going to see that you make good on everything you told them. Well, you never done a lick of work in your life. Look at them hands. You just lied about it all, didn't you? Sure I lied about it. I never did a lick of work in my life. Brought up in the lap of luxury. Cook? Me? I couldn't even boil water. Well, you're going to learn. I'll be darned if I do. You'll be starved if you don't. And cut out that swearing. I'm going to make you into the kind of woman I thought you was. A good woman. A woman that... Is that a cigarette? I'm simply dying. No. Any liquor? Oh, dear. Smoking and drinking and... Mm, smoking and drinking and men. And men? How, how, how many? Mm, I don't remember. Hundreds... And stop that. Ain't you got no decency at all? After all, you're my husband, aren't you? You're a bad woman. Re really a bad woman, with your face all painted and... Here, here, put your dress on. You better put it on. Here.
Give me that. Give those to me. Give them to me. Give them to me. All right. Stop it. Make me, make me, you great big, I'll dance if I like, and I, I want to dance. Let go of me. Stop it, stop it. Ow. Oh. Oh. You great big, so, so, if I ever lose my temper, I'll get so mad one of these days. I'll show you just how. Glory, baby. Glory. Oh, God, please don't let her die. She's wicked, but I love her. Glory, glory, baby. My dream man, hold me tight. My dream man. Dream man, hold me, dream man. In answer to the many wires and letters from the various Glory Eden clubs over the country, we wish to say that Miss Eden will not be on the air this week, owing to her honeymoon, which is taking place on a private yacht. Who thought up this ball stuff? I did. You did? You make me sick. You're fired. We've got to do something. But why? We've got to look someplace, but where? Let us use reason. They're not dead or they'd be in the morgue. Yes, sure, I know. And they are not in the accident, otherwise they would have been in a hospital or in jail. I'll be there pretty soon myself if this keeps up. It's not for me that I am worrying. It's for the product. A million dollar business goes into the ash can, and just because nobody's got any sense. And me, with a year's contract for her. And I pay. <laughs> I pay. Does she sing? Does she not sing? I pay. That kind of a contract you can draw. But the one to hold the girl, that you cannot draw. Don't be a fool, Sam. The contract was flawless. But you, you wouldn't let her sign. I wouldn't let her sign? For a wedding present, you say. Hold it. I wouldn't let her sign. You're fired. Don't you worry, Miss Ipswich. What if she don't come back? I know her songs. I can sing them. If you tell it to me once more... But I can sing them. You em. are fired. If it wasn't for you going off with a strange man. He kidnapped me, honest, Miss Ipswich. And if Mr. Herbert hadn't been... Losing his pens at the time like that. I didn't lose them. Vera took them. You are fired. Oh, oh Mr. Ipswich. Oh, give me a chance, Miss Ipswich. Listen. My imaginary sweetheart... I imagine you're real. You're everything I want you to be. Where are you, my ideal? I got it. They're in Harlem. Remember how Glory was always beefing about Harlem? I'll bet if we comb all the black and tans, we'll find them. A purity girl in a Harlem dog. Kidnapped. Oh, it's a wonderful story. Held for ransom. Get me some paper. I'll write a ransom note and turn it over to the police. Then we'll start negotiations through the press. It's a marvelous oh, idea. I'll give you a Look! Look! The Celtic Glory contract. The Castro. He felt it. Why, the dirty lowlife. Uh, but she hasn't signed. <laughs> You're hired. Hello? Oh. Oh, hello, George. Just a minute. It's the broadcasting station. They have a chance to resell your time on the air. To whom? Tim Kelsey. Tell them I'll be right over. Be right over. They'll be right over. Okay, thanks. It's not for me that I'm worrying. It's for the product. <laughs> Wait. 
Where is my girl, you horse thief? And you, you cuttlefish. Look at them. Two of them together. He is the reason why she wouldn't sign that contract. It's a plot. It's this a... is a contract that you wanted her to sign. We are suing for recovery, for breach of ethics. Ah, and no for did. what did you bust up my wedding and kidnap my bride? We haven't got your bride. For a dish rag. Dirty, filthy dish rag. That's right. Dirty, filthy dish rag. But only... If you were the one that used it! Gentlemen, gentlemen, please! He's doing things to me, that fella! First, he wants my time on there. Then he wants to kidnap my girl. If you want a girl, go and dig up for yourself your own girl. Or go to the mountains and find your own Anglo-Saxon. You don't tell me I know what it's all about. Please, remember you don't tell me anything. Listen, I got an idea that hillbilly's taking her home. I'll get her all right. Signed, sealed, and delivered. Give me that contract. I got an idea. What an idea? Wait a minute. Explain me the idea. Now, Sam, don't worry. Pennsylvania Station. Right. General Airport. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, your own ticket, Glory. Smoking out, drinking out, morality out. Oh, I wish Jim were here. He just loves hot gingerbread. Huh? But he had to go to town for some groceries. Oh. Yeah. Glory, get this. Harlem, whenever you like. Harlem? Harlem, every night. What for? What for? Do you remember by any chance that for days and nights you howled for Harlem? Oh, that. Some more coffee? Yeah. Won't you have some more chicken? No, thank you. Where did you learn to cook like this? In the orphan's home, and I hated it. But it's different when you love somebody. You don't have to pull that act for me. I write that stuff. I'm not. I mean it. And you don't get homesick for the big city at all? Not at all? What did I get out of it? Only one thing. Jim, that's all. But in the evening, when you listen to the radio. Oh, I'm sorry I spoiled your program, but you can get another girl. I hope so. Uh-oh. Well, I guess I'll have to phone the boss. Nothing doing. Glory, will you listen in tonight? You know, just for old time's sake, to the dear old Ipsy Whipsy hour. Surely. Thanks. Goodbye. See you later. argue. I know what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, put our on, I tell you, and I guarantee Glory's return. All right. And on the top of everything else, my press agent has to go crazy. You're hired. Oh, thank you, Miss Ipswich. Thank you. <laughs> This is Vera. She'll be the Ipsy Whipsy girl for tonight. Now listen, Vera. Give it to me. My imaginary sweetheart. Now yes. don't forget it. Sweetheart. Yes. This way, Vera. And if it doesn't work, speed is fire. No, no, no. It's a swell contract. But I don't want to go back. I'm happy here, aren't you? Sure, but I could be happy any place with you. You mean you want me to go back? Oh, it ain't that. I just kind of figured when a person's got a talent, they, they ought to use it. 
Exactly. And with a gift like Glory's... Courtesy of the Ipsy Wipsy Washcloth of Dreams. And we have a rare treat for you tonight, friends. The new Ipsy Wipsy Girl. She makes you feel kind of... Uh, they, they oughtn't to let her do that on the air. It's disgusting. Think of it. Every man in the country listening to that creature. And in your place. It's an insult, really. doing in here? Why, he's taking Miss Glory to New York. Did she sign with Kelsey Dishray? Yep, she signed. Jim, I'm surprised at you. I'm ashamed. I thought that the Davies of Kentucky protected their women. Do you know this man, Kelsey? Well, no. <laughs> Wait till you see him. And yet, you give him this innocent child. But, Mr. Dennis, what am I going to do? I've got an idea, Jim. Well, so I said to myself, I've been a little bit too hasty with my old pal, Tim Kelsey. After all, in these hard times, we've got to stand together. That's right. A rock ain't no wash clothes of dreams, but still it has a right to live. So if my old pal, Tim Kelsey, would like a hook in an hour air time, well, I'll let him have it. <laughs> That's right, Sam. We've got to stand together. Now, just because you have glory... So we've drawn up an agreement. I've got it. He's out. Do I know dames? Look. <laughs> For months, you've been throwing it in my teeth. How your business booms up while mine booms down. And what is that dish rag anyhow? Well, now we'll find out what is our washcloth. It's Miss Eden, sir. Oh, hello, everybody. Oh, Mr. Kelsey, your sponsor. Welcome, dear. Welcome. Oh, are you the man I was supposed to sing for? Supposed? It's all signed. Signed or not, I'm not going to let my wife sing. You're right, my boy. Always wear the pants. She's signed and she'll sing. Not without me. Not without him. You're hired. He's hired. He's great. I've heard him reading poems. I'll give you a contract. I got a contract. Speed signed me last night. I'll sue for my rights. I'll get out of the junction. I'll stop this whole thing. Gentlemen, thing. please. Let us talk it all over. Winston, don't be so conservative. Oh, shut, shut up, man. Sit down, you What do you think this is? Well, you know, it's a
you in the mountains, by the seaside, on the desert, in Manhattan penthouse, our little nest on Main Street, wherever you are, if there's a dream in your heart, listen, for we bring to you, through the courtesy of the Ipswich Kelsey Company, manufacturers of Ipsy Kelsey cloppies, a half hour of song and poem by the Lovebird. You can have your fame and riches. All I ask for life is love. And a simple little cottage with a great blue sky above. You have looked for love since time began to fly. Cinderella found a prince, and so have I. It's a great surprise for them. Tonight, we are all going to Harlem. <laughs> Just because a washcloth and a dish rag got together, it's a clean-up. <laughs> 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 